May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. I give you a new commandment. If you love one, that you love one another. And you love one another, you know how to do that because you do it just as I have loved you. These are the words that are central to our Christian faith. At the end of the day, there are some of us that spend hours studying these things and you hear, you can read books and you can write and you can talk to people. But at the end of the day, What's that old hymn that says, they'll know we're Christians by our love? My goodness, I can't believe I quoted an old hymn. Michael Curry would be so proud of me. But that at the end of the day is, this is tonight. These words are what everything else is about. None of the rest matters. Jesus, on the very last night he was here with us, he said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. And you'll know that because I've showed you how. And so what do we know? Tonight is the night in the church that liturgical people like myself just love because it is all about symbolism. It is all about how is it that each thing we say and do and touch, how is it that it's a portal, that it's a way that we connect to our faith? I imagine Jesus sitting at that table. We've all seen the paintings. And I imagine a couple of weeks ago in the gospel, we heard Jesus getting to uh, the garden and just looking around. I imagine at some point, have you ever been at a gathering, maybe a family gathering or some gathering and everybody was chatting and everybody was talking and maybe just a moment in time, maybe just a, a moment in time, you just kind of emotionally stepped back and listened and looked. And you looked around and you saw people maybe Maybe in your mind's eye, you can imagine a parent or a loved one in your, in your eye, and you just look around and you, you notice. And in my imagination, Jesus is sitting at that table, and he knows what this night means. And so he thinks to himself, he looks, and he maybe looks at Judas, and he goes, poor guy, <laughs> poor guy. You know, we've got Peter's like, oh, yes, okay, so if you love me, then make, okay, so washing the feet's going to put me on the inside circle, then let's do my hands and my head, let's just, I, I'm in the pool. And Jesus looks and smiles and says, you know, you're not completely clean. Because again, remember, we hear those words, you will betray me three times. He looks around and he imagines what each person's role is going to be in this. How is it that maybe he remembers a walk they've had or a dinner they've had, and he knows that it's all about to change. He knows that he's told stories. He's, he's told them lessons. He's, he's talked to them about the commandments. He's talked to them about covenants. He's performed miracles. They've seen things that we can't even imagine. And sometimes, as I'm sure we've all had that experience, maybe with a child or a friend, or maybe if we're a teacher or a mentor, we think to ourselves, I've really done all I can. And he knows that. And so he gets up and whatever it is he had on, he takes it off. And he wraps a towel around his waist and in, and in all humility, because remember, Jesus, we will talk about him being the king of kings. We sing these glorious songs, but Jesus came to walk among us. And it is by Jesus' vulnerability, it's by him loving us when we couldn't love him back, 
It's that when he looks at Judas and goes, oh, you poor thing, knowing, knowing the torment. So he gets up and he takes a bowl of water and he starts to wash their feet because everything that Jesus does, he tries to take something concrete he tries to teach a lesson, and then he tries to have an audiovisual aid. There are words for this. Theologically, we call this anamnesis. But if we're going to be clear, how is it that we all learn differently, right? So Jesus, he tells a story. He draws the context. And then he draws us into the experience. And he says, okay, so this is how you love each other. You care for them at their deepest places. Their feet were gross. I mean, we may not like our feet, but the chances are good if you're on the internet coming to a Zoom Episcopal church, you have water in your home. So you have probably bathed. The life they lived, their feet were so, so yucky that the slaves weren't even required to wash their master's feet. So Jesus went to the very messiest place. He got on his knees and he washed their feet and he didn't say, do it right or your history. He didn't say, my God, I have done everything I can and you are just not getting it. We hear over and over again from Jesus that our job is to have one, we have one job. It's to love one another as Jesus has loved us. So he washes their feet. He goes to their most vulnerable place. And they wonder, it gets their attention and that's what he wants, right? When we do things that are hit those vulnerable places, it gets our attention. He washes their feet and then what else does he do? Then he goes and he feeds them. These are common things that we all do no matter where we are in the world, no matter how much money we make, no matter what color of our skin, no matter who we are. Water is central to who we are in the world and bread and water are central to who we are. And he says, okay, no matter who you are, you take this bread and when you take it, when you take it, remember this night, remember me. Ever since I got here, people have always asked me, why do you say remember wrong? Why do you say remember? And I say remember because a, me a, a mentor of mine used to say it. And he taught me that it meant remember, bring back together. Remember. So for me, that's what it means. So take this and remember me. And it's my body, don't let me, and I will, I will be with you all the time. And, and he took the cup because he knew that they were gonna see his blood shed. Take this cup and when you drink it, remember me. I'm asking you to do one thing when I leave. When I leave, I'm begging you to love one another. Care for each other. Listen to each other, wash each other, care for each other, feed each other. And then there's this last thing I really need you to do. Because if you don't do this, none of this is going to matter. I need you to do it when you see what's going to happen, because you're not going to be able to understand it now. When you see what happens. Remember me. At the beginning of this Lent, I asked us some questions. I asked us, what are we protecting? 
when we think about our sins, when we think about those places that we want to hold up to God. I asked us to pray and wonder, what are we protecting? What pain are we hiding from? It's on this night that I invite us to really name that in our own hearts and our own souls. That the vulnerability and the pain and just the humanity of how it is that Jesus teaches us how loved we are. That maybe if we can lean into that, we can be reminded that whatever we're protecting we can shine it in the light because shame dies in the light. We can move past those places that we put there because we think we're not good enough or we think God's not gonna love us enough or we think fill in the blank or it might be too hard or we might not want it, whatever it is. Tonight, when we leave, we will leave in darkness. And before we do that, we will have the last Eucharist before the crucifixion. During this time, as many of you, I'm sure that if you're gathering this evening, you've witnessed this before, we have the stripping of the altar. We have the last Eucharist and all of the, all of the sacrament. Earlier this afternoon, I went to the reserved sacrament and emptied that out appropriately. As we leave tonight, tomorrow for me has always been an important time. It's the one day in the church year that for us, we think Jesus is dead. What would it be like if we couldn't turn to Jesus? The good news is we know the rest of the story, right? But if we enter into the story, it will change us. So tonight we will do those last words before Easter morning. And when we are done, we will say a litany of penance. We will open our hearts and our souls to God. We will darken the church and strip the altar and it will be dark. And it is time for us to pray and wonder how it is that we hear those words from Jesus. I give you this new commandment that you love one another and you do that just how I showed you how or someone else has showed you how or some mentor or person, how someone in your life has showed you how. Because at the end of the day, if you remember nothing else from the Bible, if you remember nothing else from scripture or the prayer book, remembering what Jesus asks us to do on this night, if we can live into that in little bits at a time, as infallible and as human as we are, we will be changed. And more importantly, the world around us will be changed in little bitty increments. The beginning of Lent, I also shared this, uh, this quote from David White, and I think it's as important tonight as we lean into this next uh, part of it as it was back then. Confession is a stripping away of protection. Imagine when the altar is stripped, the altar is stripped, Jesus is stripped. How is it? Is a stripping away of protection. The telling of a truth which might once have seemed like a humiliation. Have you ever told somebody something really bad you did and it was anticlimactic? I've had that feeling. Early on, I, I mean, I have, I remember an instance, I won't bore you with it, but I went thinking this was, I knew this person. I was going to confess to them that I had done this, was a big thing. And she could have, she didn't, she's like, yeah, I did that. I was like, so anticlimactic. 
How is it that we, so we might tell the truth that one might have seemed like a humiliation becomes suddenly a gateway or an entrance to solid ground? May, may this work be an entrance to solid ground, even a first step home. To confess is to declare oneself ready for a more courageous road. This Christian life isn't one for wimps, an old friend of mine used to say. It is a courageous road, but you are not alone. And we have the map. This is the time during the service, if we were together and God willing, we will be able to do this next year. We will wash each other's feet. I know there are some of you that hate that. But I also want us to notice, I have my, my camera person, Sarah's amazing. Um, I have brought over here, this is the uh, baptismal bowl that many of you might remember from the back of the church. And in it is water. Remember that the washing of feet, what does it remind you of? Our water is central to us about new life, about baptism being born into new life. So as I read these words, I want you to take a moment and I'm gonna give us pause to take a moment and imagine in the comfort of your own home, wherever you are, because I suppose the good thing about Zoom is it gets to be a little more intimate. Imagine if you were having your feet washed. Imagine in your mind's eye, Jesus getting down and saying, love one another as I love you and hear these words the lord jesus after he had supped with his disciples and had washed their feet said to them do you know what i your lord and master have done to you i have given you an example that you should do as i have done peace Peace is my last gift to you. My own peace I now leave with you. Peace which the world cannot give, I give to you. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Peace is my last gift to you. My own peace I now leave with you. Peace which the world cannot give, I give to you. Let those words land in your heart and let them rest with you as we move forward. <clears throat>